And we have a bit more detail on just how close they came. I think you've referenced as well that they were, uh, in fact, from what I understand from people close to the situation, expecting that a settlement would have been what was announced yesterday, not uh, the charges from the SEC against Mr. Musk. But we can give you more details as what it, what was offered, <clears throat> what apparently was thought to have been close to agreed to, and why Musk walked away. And there it is. Uh, it would have required Musk neither to admit nor deny uh, culpability. Um, it would have barred him as chairman for two years. <clears throat> he would have received a fine. Uh, and the company, of course, Tesla, would also have paid a fine. And the SEC apparently was also requiring the company to add two new independent directors to its board. Shareholders may see that and go, well, why wouldn't you take that deal? Um, Musk could have stayed on as CEO, paid the fines, added the independent directors, and moved on. But apparently, um, from what I understand, he felt that he was so in the right here uh, that his inability to deny having done this was something he simply could not uh, accede to. And so that is why those settlement talks apparently failed to produce uh, an agreement and resulted, of course, in Mr. Musk being charged. Not the company, which, as we've also sort of indicated, and I did yesterday, was an expectation until, in fact, the complaints came out, or the, the complaint came out, and it did not include uh, the company. That would have been not a 10B violation, but a different violation. I think a 13A 15 violation kind of saying well you're responsible for your actions of your of the actions of your employees they didn't go there they did go after musk but guys i'm curious what your thoughts are you know he turned down a settlement conceivably right. that a lot of shareholders probably would have been very happy with well the, and, and that's what we've been talking about all morning because it clearly puts uh, the company in jeopardy it by the way also potentially puts uh, the employees investors not only of tesla but of his private company, SpaceX, to the extent they ever had ambitions to be a publicly traded company. If he were to be found guilty, that makes that more complicated. Raising money from institutional investors for the boring company. I mean, this is sort of much more, I mean, there's the Tesla story. It becomes much more uh, widespread. And, and, and as, as you reported and, and as we reported this morning, um, this idea of a, a no admit, no deny with very little, only f relatively a financial penalty and effectively, as you said, taking a, a, a step back and almost cosmetic changes to the company, uh, you would think that the board, uh, from a fiduciary responsibility, uh, would have been to, to take a deal like that. Have, having said that, it, it, as I think we've now both reported, there was at least a thinking uh, that Elon Musk uh, expressed, according to sources, uh, at least that I spoke to, that he could not abide by the idea that he would never be able to deny uh, what took place, uh, and, and specifically this idea that it went to his integrity that it went to his intent uh, more than anything else. Though, it's, we should also say, the standard in this particular instance has nothing to do with intent. I mean, that's one component of it, but the other component is you can simply be found guilty, uh, in fact, by being reckless, uh, which could be considered a mistake. And so that's the other, the other piece of it. It's a much lower bar. Um, the question yep. I have is whether there would ever be an opportunity to come back uh, for to settle on similar terms again or whether the SEC would draw a line in the sand because I would imagine there's going to be a lot of pressure from Tesla shareholders to get tr to try to get back to that table yeah, uh, rather than get to court exactly right. yeah I, I, and I don't know the answer to that right. I mean Andrew we I'm sure we both remember Steve Peakin of course one of the people who's bringing this yep. case having been involved in WorldCom and Quatron and obviously been at Sullivan Cromwell all these years he might know. Um, not sure he's going to take my call, but we can always give it a shot. But I, I don't know. You know, it's funny, though, because you mentioned recklessness um, and the staff's focus on recklessness and it being a part of the charge itself. Uh, some would say this is reckless not to have taken the right. settlement. You know, come on. Uh, so you can't be chairman for two years and you got to add a couple independent directors and pay a fine and not deny it. But that's it. Um, yeah. So we'll see how this develops. And certainly right. how the stock performs today, but I think it is interesting in light of, of course, what you've been reporting, sort of some of the other details we know here, uh, how shareholders are going to react to that decision. And, and Bob Lutz part. made the point yeah. to Becky. That, I don't know if that's you want to. That's the point I was going to get to. Yeah. This, just this idea that it's very challenging, if not impossible, to raise money. I think you're not allowed to. Uh, not allowed to yeah. raise money 
during a, a case that's still ongoing like this. So that, that could also complicate things to the extent that they need, to, they need a capital raise. This is going to put even more focus on both their numbers and their ability to perform just simply as a company. And, of course, their record of meeting those numbers, um, to be polite about it, has not, has, has not always lived up uh, to the hype. So there's going to be... Uh, no, it hasn't. And we understand the pressure that Mr. Musk has been on in recent months, or at least seemingly so, right, uh, in terms of his behavior. One would imagine this only ratchets that up to a certain extent.